everybody. It's Brandon Dan from Heck Yeah, You Can Cook. Today we're going to make a quick little baked flounder with some fresh uh, vegetables that I find is a nice, quick, easy midweek meal. Very inexpensive, and we're going to go through the process and steps. While I've got your attention, everyone, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we are glad to get every new subscriber and every view we get is precious to us. We really enjoy all the support. You can find us on Facebook at Heck Yeah You Can Cook as a group, as well as on Instagram, on the internet, uh, and also, of course, on TikTok. So please join us at Heck Yeah You Can Cook. Today's ingredients that you'll need for this flounder dish, well, let's go through our tools first. We're going to need a sharp knife kitchen knife. You're going to need a spatula and that's going to be for a little later on. I've got a four quart baking dish that's 16 by 9 I believe and I've also got a um, cooling rack here that you're going to need as you pull everything out of the oven. Of course you need oven mitts to do that. For the ingredients for today I have got one shallot that I have minced. Okay very finely cut. I have one red pepper that I've diced very fine. I've got two ounces of shredded carrots. I, buy, I, I cheat, I buy the bag and I pull them out and put them on the scale. There's two ounces. I've got a tablespoon of dill. I'm not going to use all of it. That's just so we can grab and go as we're cooking. Now I've also got a yellow squash here that I have cut into little pieces like this. I'm going to show you how we do that in just a second. I've also got some salt, lemon, and chili. This is actually called sauté limon. Uh, I got this from a local tienda. It is fantastic for seafood, folks. Do you don't need any salt? It's already got the chili. It's already got the lemon. We add a little dill. Wonderful little quick dish. I'm using grapeseed oil. I like to use grapeseed oil when I'm making uh, fish when I bake it like this. I've also got two pounds of from frozen. I got this at the supermarket. This is Arrowwood flounder. Um, I let it defrost for a couple days in the refrigerator. And I do have a paper towel here as you're working with this. You gotta kind of pat it dry. Um, it doesn't matter how much you rinse it, pat it dry beforehand. There's still ice crystals that get released, especially if it's sitting at room temperature. You want the season to stick. Make sure you will use the uh, paper towel to pat that dry as you're working. Before we get working with that, we're gonna show you how I do the squash here. Grab a large squash. I try to get a larger one. You can use two small ones for this. Take it across. Cut it in half. Put it in halves together. Come through it like that. There you go. Put it right into the bowl. And you can bring the bowl a little closer so the reach so far. And this is given it that the fish doesn't cook as long as other uh, types of meat do. And so, you know, you kind of want to make those vegetables into more of a bite size, even a little bit smaller piece so they can cook all the way through. As you can see, that's kind of the volume that you want here. Now we're going to prep the pan now for baking. Take it, sit on the cutting board here. Get a little closer for me. And I go ahead and make us bed with this squash. One of them missed. Guess I'm being a little too dainty there. Using all the squash, we're going to make a bed for the seafood, for the flour. And then I add about half of each of the vegetables, not all. Some of these aromatics are going to go on top of the flounder as they bake. So you saved about half of each of those. Now we come over to the flounder, and what I like to do is put this here. So you guys can see. As I, like I said, you're constantly patting dry if it comes from frozen. Not that big of an issue if it comes from fresh. You got several pieces on top here. Pat those dry. And I come across with the chili. Don't heavily season. It's more of a light, light season. And you kind of work this in shifts. You want to be able to see the flounder through it, just like that. Then I set that right on top of the bed. Kind of have to work these pieces around so you have plenty of room. And do this for both sides of the fish. 
Make sure you get all the pieces nice and lightly seated. One important thing I forgot to mention, preheat your oven to 375 on the bake setting. Did it again, didn't I? 375 on the bake setting. Once you've got the fish placed on here, I move it back to my cutting board, wash my hands, and put the plate in the dishwasher after cleaning it. Now we're going to add just a little bit of dill. Now we're only going to add dill to the top of the fish. Just the top. I don't like dill on both sides in this dish. I like it just on the top. You just lightly sprinkle the dill across. Even less of a coating than the chili is. Now, this was probably more about a couple teaspoons full of dill. I have a giant container of dill, so I just use it and put it out as needed. So, if you want to use a little less when you're uh, making the ingredients, that is fine. Now, I'll take the rest of the vegetable that you had, the shallots, the uh, carrots, and the uh, bell pepper, and put it across the top. Make sure it touches the top of the fish. There you go. All these vibrant colors will cook well together. Look at the grapes here all. Just add a little bit across the top of the fish. Folks, you're done. Now, you're going to bake this for about 20 25 minutes. I do put in a probe thermometer and get it to 145 degrees. You don't have to do that. You can kind of tell when your fish is done as it starts to flick. We're going to come back and show a finished product here in just a little bit. Hey everybody, the thermometer has drawn off. Timer maybe in your case. Like I said, it's been about 23, 24 minutes since we put this in the oven. Take it out now and see the product. There we go. Flounder is all baked. What I like to do now is I take the spatula and I simply remove the fish. You can leave on the. Gotta be careful here. You know, let that sit over here on the plate to rest. Don't break your part too much. You're going to set it just like this on a plate, allow it to cool, and I'll show you in just a minute. We'll come back, I'm going to serve this with a sweet potato with some of the vegetables on top. You'll see it plated. Thank you. Now, unlike a lot of dishes that you may see while you're plating, you do not want the juice on this. Just a lot of stuff. Drain that real well. I should have said, set it, the vegetables are on top of the flounder like that. And tonight, we'll serve this with a sweet potato. There we go, everybody. There is your baked flounder with carrots and shallots, a little bit of chili lime seasoning, some dill. Hope everybody enjoys. Have a great day.